Hey YouTube, Dawson Riders here. Welcome to my review for King Oger episode 30. Another great episode following up last week's best episode of the series so far. This one wasn't quite as good, but it continued the momentum really well. I do have some mixed thoughts on some things, but it's ultimately kind of meaningless because it's kind of more about stuff that we don't have the big picture on yet. Like, we pick up with um, Rita and Himeno having tea together, and they're having a conversation. Um, and it's kind of funny because Rita starts bringing up that they want to uh, like, destroy all scalpers. And like they want scalpers to have absolute justice. And that's when Himeno tells Rita about this phrase from her kingdom about like, oh, I'm gonna, if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to take you with me. And Rita's like, yes, that's how I feel about scalpers. And it's funny because that's like a very comedic beat, but it sets up an emotional moment for later in a way. And then you also have... Uh, Gira checking in on Jeremy, seeing how he's doing after the events of last week. And then when this is happening, both of these things are happening, they're both surprised by a surprise arrival. Uh, Rita and Himno are surprised by the arrival of Rita's former mentor, who was supposed to be, you know, gone and imprison this person. And then, spoiler alert, well, obviously you know if you're watching this video, it's the person she imprisoned that shows up at the doorstep of Jeremy and Gira, who is the person that caused Fury of the Gods. And we find out all this backstory, and they really tie together the two storylines of Rita and Himeno here, is we discover that the guy that did Fury of the Gods uh, was Zachary Levi. No, that is uh, this guy that was actually part of the new villain group. He was like the fifth member. And like the main villain doesn't even remember him at first. He needs his memory jogged, I guess, because it's been so long. But he was a member of that group. And he's like obsessed with death. Like he can't die, so I think that gives a fascination with death. And he's like angry at things that are alive, which is kind of fascinating. And, yeah, so he was the one that caused the Fury of the Gods. And then they tie that to Rita's story, because obviously we learned about how their mentor had imprisoned them in the past because they needed absolute justice, and that's why the, the mentor left in the first place. And then we learn about what's up with Rita's eye. I guess it's a secret, like, Goken power that allows you to, like, freeze your enemy. Like, you can freeze and imprison them, but you freeze and imprison yourself at the same time. And they were told to keep that a secret. Uh, admittedly, I think that was a little bit of an underwhelming reveal. All the reveals can't be bangers, I guess, but it worked in the context of the plot, obviously, and the emotional beat to this episode, but it was admittedly a little bit uh, underwhelming for me, just in terms of, I guess it wasn't a built-up mystery, but I was thinking about it more recently because I noticed their eye more since the time jump. Regardless, though, we find out all that, and basically, it hits the fan, as this monster is extremely powerful, and he starts up a kind of a version of Fury of the Gods again, and amongst all this chaos... Uh, you know, as you would kind of predict, Rita attempts to seal him away. And, like, you have this big emotional moment where they're using the technique, and you have, like, this moment where uh, they have a vision of Moffin hugging him, which is really funny. I thought that was just a funny moment, because it's, like, funny because you just remember how many comedic bits are with that, but also it's, like, kind of sweet because it's, like, your comfort thing. And then you realize it's actually Himeno hugging him, and uh, Himeno stops... Rita from sacrificing themselves. And that's also kind of cliche in a way. Not like in a negative way, but I'm just saying, I, I wasn't necessarily expecting that. I honestly thought Rita was going to sacrifice themselves, and then there was going to be like maybe a little mini arc or an episode about like, okay, how do we free them and stuff like that. Or maybe they try to free them and uh, like then they're mad because they free the villain too. But I honestly thought that they were going to be frozen at least for a minute. But I didn't expect him and to stop him. And, uh, you know, it kind of tied together with her not wanting to lose more family, just like she lost her last family to the Fury of the Gods. And it was a nice moment building on their friendship that they've, well, built up. And obviously keeping this guy on the board. I don't know why I was half expecting him to be killed off, because he's a pretty big deal in terms of the story, so he's probably got to stick around for a little bit. But honestly, probably the biggest twist is, like, you have all this stuff going on, pretty major stuff, um, starting to answer questions and move along stories that have been going on for a while. And then, like, all of a sudden, at the end, this monster just comes in and is like, boom, 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 takes everyone out. And it's Jeremy's mother. Cut to credits. And then it's like, Jeremy's mother will return in next week's episode. But I was not expecting that at all. I think, like, it was an even bigger cliffhanger than the Retainers one. I mean, the Retainers one was shocking because it was during kind of a fun filler episode, and then it was such a, a shocking, like, more serious ending. But this one was even more shocking just because there was already big stuff going on, and I just didn't expect that storyline to come in at the same time. Like, it made the episode, it was already a great episode, but it, like, elevated even further. Like, it was really great to finally start to get answers about these things and flesh out the backstory. I have slightly mixed feelings about the Fury of the Gods guy being tied to the new main villains. It makes sense. I still, I don't know why, I just want some sort of other conflict that's, like, unrelated, because I just like the idea of them facing unrelated conflicts. 
but it does make a lot of sense. It did make me think it would have been kind of cool to have, um, you know, I'm not saying this would have been better or I didn't like the way they did it, but I think it would have been cool to maybe tie uh, more of the Fear of the Gods mystery into the buildup of the new villains. Either that could have been a cool way to introduce them to be like, once the, like before we did the time jump or something or after, you know, you introduce the Fear of the Gods guy and be like, kind of like a Reddit situation with the Saiyans, like, oh, you think I'm bad? Wait till you see my friends. And so they like, find out he's from another planet and then, or dimension or whatever, and then you introduce the bad guys. Or, you know, you do the Fury of the Gods stuff a little bit before the time jump and find out about this guy and then you're like, oh, if you're not a Bugnarok, what the hell is he? And then kind of a lead in to the main villains. Uh, regardless, that's just some thoughts I had about it. Be mainly because I do think it's interesting that it almost feels like we're running off a checklist of plots that we introduced before the time jump, which I'm not mad about because when I talked about the time jump, I was like, I hope we don't drop these plots or, you know, let them get answered like unsatis in an unsatisfactory manner. Uh, but it does feel weird that like, even though obviously this plot is now very much tied to the reveals about the new main villains, it does feel like they're like, oh crap, we forgot we set up these stories before we did the time jump. And it almost has me wishing they had waited to do the time jump or resolved these stories first and then the time jump could have been a true clean slate. Again, not that I'm mad, it just feels a little bit weird. I think it's only because like three of the stories that were going on, which is the stuff with Rita, the stuff with Himeno, and the stuff with Jeremy's past are all happening at the same time. So it feels like oh, we got to get all this stuff out of the way we set up before the time jump, before Daigo arrives. That's just kind of what it feels like. But again, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that they're answering it all. I'm probably the most interested in the Jeremy stuff because I found his whole backstory fascinating. I think there's going to be lots of interesting lore and lots of stuff that will make his character even better. So I'm glad they're introducing it. it. did just bring up some jumbled pacing, which was kind of strange. But still, really strong episode. Really liked it. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Not as good as last week's, but man, King Oger has been fantastic so far. What did you guys think of this week's episode? Let me, like, let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell. See you notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.